All right, welcome back. We're gonna get started talking about um, example four. Before we do that, we have to talk about the cross products property. Okay, and what the cross products property says is that whenever you have, um, does anybody remember what this is? These are two fractions that are set um, equal to each other. So this is called a proportion, right? Or two ratios set equal to each other. So whenever you have a proportion, what you can do is the cross products. You can multiply the things that are across from each other, like diagonal, AD is actually equal or equivalent to multiplying BC. That's the cross products property. So you can just multiply these two things together. So in the next example, what we're gonna be doing is applying the cross products property. So let's start here with A. Um, so we're going to solve each proportion. So remember here we're trying to figure out what this variable is. And this variable, we can never figure it out when it's on the bottom. So what we have to do is the cross products property. Remember we talked about doing it a different way earlier. And you can totally do that um, way, which is, I use that a lot, um, where you just multiply both sides by W. But we're also going to learn a different way, which is called the cross products property. So we're going to take these right here. So 5 times W, which is just 5W. And that's equal to 3 times 9, which is 27. And then we just solve for W, so we're going to divide both sides by 5. And we end up with W equals 27 over 5. And that is our answer. All right? Let's go ahead and try B. So we have two proportions. Now this looks a little bit different, but it's okay. So we're going to go um, multiply those. X plus 10 times 1 is just X plus 10 equals 8 times 12, well, I'm not sure what that is off the top of my head, so I'm gonna go 12 times 8 up here, 8 times 2 is 16, write the 6 carry the 1, 8 times 1 is 8, plus 1 is 9, so it's 96. And then we just solve this algebra problem, so we're gonna use the subtraction property of equality, we're gonna subtract by 10 to both sides, and we end up with x equals, what's that gonna be, 86? Yes, it is, and there's our answer, perfect. So let's go ahead and go on to the next one here. C, just the cross products property. So let's go um, two times y, which is two y is equal to eight times negative five, which is gonna give us a negative times a positive is a negative, five times eight is 40. And then we just wanna get y by itself, so we're gonna divide both sides by two. That two divided by two is one, one times y is y. And we end up with, um, negative 40. No, <laughs> negative 40 divided by 2. A negative divided by a positive is a negative. 40 divided by 2 is 20. So there's our answer right there, y equals negative 20. All right, so let's go ahead and do this next one, d, together. So again, we're just going to do the cross products property. So 4 times the quantity g plus 3. Now you have to be careful about this one because it's 4 times this entire thing. So you have to write it like this. 4 times the entire quantity g plus 3 okay, is equal to 7 times 5, which is, um, what's 7 times 5? It is um, 35, right? Um, yeah. So then we just wanna get g by itself. Now, I can solve this two ways. I can either distribute four to both things or I can just divide everything by four. Now, what I see is I see that this um, number isn't like divisible by four. So once I divide it by four, then it's gonna be a fraction. So I think what I'm gonna do is try the distributive property and, um, and maybe that will be easier. Um, we'll see. Four times g is four g. And then 4 times 3 is 12 equals 35, right? And then we want to get g by itself. Um, so we have to get rid of this 12 first. So I'm going to subtract by 12 to both sides. That cancels. We're left with 4g equals, what's that, 3 and 2, 23. Yeah. Um, and then we just, now it's time to divide both sides by 4. And we end up with g equals 23 over 4, which is a fraction, which is totally fine. Um, it's just if I would have divided this by 4 first, then I would have had to subtract a fraction from 3, which I can do. But it was just easier to just have the fraction come in at the end. 
So that's why I chose to do that this way. If this would have been like a six, like 36, it would have been easier for me to divide both sides because 36 divided by four is nine. And so it, it would have been easier to, it would have been less steps to, um, if this number had to be, um, just happened to be divisible by four. So you kind of just have to have like a mass street smarts as far as which way you want to use that makes your life easier. Um, but you would have arrived at the same answer either way. It's just sometimes a, a certain way is easier and then at other times a different way is easier. So it's no like rule. It's just kind of, you kind of have to get experience and then kind of feel it out. Okay, so what I want you to do is um, I want you to do E and F on your own. Only E and F. Do not go forward, just E and F. Okay, so where's my friend? Here's my friend, the pause dragon. Okay, go ahead and pause, work out E and F. When you get done, press play, and we'll talk about them together. All right. Okay, we're back. Let's go ahead and use that cross products property. I'm going to go 2 times y minus 3 first. Remember, that's 2 multiplied by the quantity y minus 3 is equal to 6 times 7, which is 42. And so for this, I'm going to solve this one the different way where I'm just going to divide. And I can do distributive property or I can divide everything by 2. And since this is divisible by 2, I'm just going to divide everything by 2, right? 2 divided by 2 is just 1. And then so what I have is y minus 3 equals 42 divided by 2, which would be um, at 21. And then I'm trying to get y by itself, so I have to add 3 to both sides, and I get y equals 24. So if you got y equals 24, great job. And if you can see, you can see how that is just, it's not as many steps as when you do the distributive property, but you can arrive to the, um, the answer the same way. So if you didn't get this, then you need to go ahead and um, fix it. I'll go ahead and solve it just in case for anybody that did it using the distributive property, just so you can see um, that it's solved both ways. So if we go here, we do the distributive property, that would be 2y, and then 2 times negative 3 would be negative 6, right? Then we'd add the 6 to both sides, that would give us 48, 2y, and we divide both sides by 2, which would give us y equals um, 24, because half of 40 is 20 and half of 8 is 4, so 24. Get the same answer either way. Okay, on to the next one. Um, cross products property. So negative five times h is just negative five h equals two times six is twelve. And then we're just going to divide both sides by negative five, and we get h equals negative twelve over five, and that's our answer. So if you got that one, awesome job. Okay. Now let's go ahead and move on to these ones. Now these ones are a little different, but we can do the cross products property and it just works the same. So that's what we're gonna do. We're going to use the cross products property here and go five times x minus one equals three times the quantity x plus one. Um, so this one, we, you know how it was like, just, oh, we can just divide it by two. We can't do that here as well. I mean, we could, but it's not going to work out. So this, these ones, we have to do distributive property. So we're going to go 5 times x, 5 times negative 1. So that's going to give us 5x. 5 times negative 1 is negative 5 equals do distributive property here. 3 times x is 3x. 3 times 1 is 3. And then we are going to... Um, what are we gonna do? We gotta get the variables on the same side. So we're gonna subtract the smaller one, which would be three X to both sides. That cancels. We have five X minus three X, which is two X minus five equals three. And then we're gonna add five to both sides, right? We get that cancels. We're left with two X equals eight. And then we divide by two. And two divided by two is one. One times X is X, X equals four. And boom shakalaka, there you go. That's how you do it. Okay, uh, let's go ahead and try H. So we're just gonna do the cross products property, same thing. So here we go, three times the quantity X minus three, so three times X minus three is equal to one times X minus five, which is just X minus five. 
okay? Um, like I said, we have to do the distributive property here. So we're gonna go three times x, which is three x, three times negative three, which would be negative nine, equals x minus five. Now we have variables on both sides of the equation. We have to get variables on the same side of the equation. So we need to uh, move the smaller, the smaller is x. We're gonna subtract x to both sides. We get three x minus x, which is two x minus nine equals negative five. And then we're trying to get it, what figure out what x is, so we need to get rid of the nine. The inverse operation of a negative nine would be a positive nine to both sides. That's zero. And what do we have here? Negative five plus nine would give us a positive four. And then we just do the inverse operation of multiplication to get x by itself, which would be division of two to both sides, and we get x equals two. And that would be our answer. So on our last one right here, T, no, this is an I. I want you to try that one on your own. So go ahead and pause, work out I. When you get your answer, press play and we'll go through it together. All right, see you in a bit. Okay, we're back. Let's go ahead and try that cross products property. So we're gonna go here with um, six Y minus one times one, which is just gonna give us six Y minus one equals y times one, which is just gonna give us y, okay? Um, we have variables on two sides of the equation. Um, I always say, hey, move the smaller one, right? But in this case, y is already over on, it, on this side of the equation by itself, so we're just gonna move this one over. So subtract six y to both sides. Six y minus six y is zero. Negative one equals y minus six y would be negative five y. And then we get y by itself by doing the inverse operation of multiplication, which would be to divide both sides by a negative five. Negative times negative is a positive. Five divided by five is one. One times y is just y. And then over here, we have a negative divided by a negative, which is a positive one-fifth. And then we're just gonna use that symmetric property of equality and flip-flop it, and we get y equals one-fifth. So if you got that as your answer, Yoko and Kimashita, you did a great job, and we will see you next time. All right, goodbye.